Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and I'm back to talk to you about my experience using the AxeFX FM9 Live, share with you the success stories, and share with you the mistakes that were made, and show you how I've corrected those moving forward. And I should, you should be able to download this new um, patch that I've built for my live setup so you can play around with it yourself and see what I have done. So if you missed the last video, I built in a very short period of time. One day I sat down um, and built a full live setup for my gig with my band, The Satin Struts, which is a soul band, we play lots of soul music, um, but I like to solo a lot. So I had a lot of soloing patches, uh, but very limited period of time in order to be able to set that up. And as I say, mistakes were absolutely made. I thought I had some good sounds and they felt like good sounds, but in reality they weren't. I wasn't being nearly as objective about them but I will do the comparisons. So in terms of our live setup, I'm running through, or at least I have been trying to run through, the Laney uh, LFR212 cabinet. Now that is a powered, 800 watt powered, full range flat response um, 2x12. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I didn't want to lose that feel of having an amp behind me, or having sound come from behind me. Um, and for the most part, that was definitely the right call. I like that, it, it kind of felt right. So a couple of comments on that though. So in the last video, um, someone did ask whether or not I was using a cabinet in the room for you to hear the sounds, or if I was recording direct. Um, I did say in the video that all the sounds were being recorded direct from the Axe Effects, but ultimately it shouldn't make a difference. And the reason I say it shouldn't make a difference, the reason it's important to consider it shouldn't make a difference, um, I don't want to hear this talk of, yeah, but there's something different about a microphone being put in front of a cabinet. And if it's not being done that way, then you're not hearing the sound of the cabinet. The whole point of this rig is to see if we can reproduce that. The whole point of this rig is to see if we don't actually need that. While I am using that cabinet, if I'm running, um, front of house sound it will be coming direct out of the unit i'm not going to use the unit to go through my amplifier uh, sorry to go through my cabinet which i guess is an amplified cabinet and then have a, a microphone on that cabinet it doesn't make sense because we're adding uh parameters we're adding variables into the signal chain that i can't actually control i want to be able to control my sound so um there is that and we you know, all sounds that you have ever heard have been recorded with a microphone. Um, there's no way that you that you hear anything on YouTube without that thing having been recorded in some way. Uh, and the point of the impulse responses is they are creating that sound. So put that out of your mind. Um, and another comment that we had actually on a previous video is they said that my amp sounds, you can see it here, my amp sounds sounded much better than the Axe FX. Um, I thought that was a really interesting comment and I'd be interested to know if people could hear a difference between the Axe FX sounds that I had been using in that video versus uh, the sounds that I used in previous videos. And the reason I say that is because as humans, we should know that we are subject to incredible levels of bias and we desperately like to um, avoid those complicated and chewy conversations that we have to have with ourselves where we have to ask ourselves, are we talking out of our ass? And in this case, yes, this gentleman was talking out of his ass. And the reason I say that is because there are no amp sounds on my channel ever, <laughs> ever. Prior to using the Axe FX, every amp sound that you hear on my channel has come from my Kemper profiling amp. So to say, you know, oh, I can hear the difference between your amps before and this now because these sound digital, is not the own that you think it is. So be careful, you know, we could have a JHS situation here again, where it turns out that you thought I was using analog rigs where I had digital. Um, the Axe FX is about using the full suite for my live thing, whereas my Kemper is a rack mounted unit and it sits here in my studio. So that's not really ideal for, for taking out. Um, anyway, so why don't we talk about the rig? Why don't we talk about these sounds? So I'm just gonna bring up um, my Fractal FM9 sound, so you can take a look at it. Um, looks like this. So this is my new patch, and uh, I can, I guess if I just press down, jump back to the previous patch. So they look very similar, because the idea hasn't changed. You can see that I have my inputs and my outputs. Uh, we're running through, um, the, in my basic channel, there's a, a drive, um, an amp, a cab. We have some delay, all controllable, and we have a kind of stock reverb, and then we're going out. And then all of the scenes, so we've got my clean Leslie sound, my solo sound, uh, solo two, 
quinoa. You know, it's all the same basic idea. Um, the new patch is going to look essentially the same as that. We do have this channel coming up the top where I have the, the synth, which I had in the previous um, example. Now, the main difference between these two things was I hadn't taken enough time to learn how to use the unit. And what I mean by that is since having you know more time at my disposal, I've been able to sit down with the uh, Cooper Carter course on how to use the FM9 and learn about important things like jumping up here into tools, going to preset leveling. Uh, that's not gonna show up. You won't see that. There's a preset leveling window. Um, I guess I can show you that if I do this. Uh, let's go like that. So this is the, uh, the preset leveling tool that I'm seeing here. Um, and when I play on that, my levels are gonna come through and I can see those. Now, if I were using that, I would have seen that that signal is very hot. It is very, very hot. And I probably could have done something about that because it didn't need to be that hot. In fact, looking in the Axe FX output blockchain, looking at these outputs here, we can see again, that's a very hot signal and there's no reason for it to be that hot. Now, I'm okay with the tone. But what I found on the gig is this isn't a clean tone. That was the first big mistake. So when we uh, we do these gigs, we're doing our own sound. So we have to set everything on the desk um, and then Mel's out the front um, and she checks the levels and things. And uh, yeah, we, we checked our levels and she said my volume was okay. Um, I didn't feel it was okay. On stage, it felt quieter than normal. Um, I couldn't really hear myself, but when I could hear myself, I could hear that my clean tone wasn't clean it felt like i was i had a crunch tone so for all of these all of those sorts of sounds that's a crunchy sound uh, which is unacceptable and ultimately you know there were a few reasons for that i had the level and the amp a bit high and ultimately i had too much gain on the amp which was something i hadn't really considered ultimately should have been using my ears i thought the tone was nice let's take a look at how i've corrected that so this is my new patch this is struts 2 i did change the amp actually we're using the bogner shiva sound the shiva clean sound and we have some compression before it now we're using the studio ff compressor which we don't have that option if you're running a pedal board you can't have rack mounted studio compressors on your board but aside from that everything is essentially the same you can see there's a drive pedal here but that's controlled by my expression pedal so as it stands until i push down on that expression pedal that's not actually doing anything so it looks like it's engaged but the drive is at zero and the mix is at zero so not doing anything at all um the amp yeah the shiva clean and the cabinets uh silverton and a princeton um there's a delay again the mix on that is zero until i engage my um my expression pedal and then that comes up some really cool things that you can do with that so now if we do a comparison here was my old clean tone <laughs> And here's the new clean tone. Now, of course, the first thing you're going to hear there is, well, there's a big significant difference in volume. But if we actually look at the outputs now. That's much more acceptable um, in terms of levels. And I'm going to be able to run that through my amp or front of house real nice and loud. And it's going to be a clean, clean tone. So that's the main change that's come here, getting an actual clean tone and using the tools available in the Axe FX to make sure that everything is the way that it probably should be. Um, the compression is definitely helping. Um, and I like that a lot. The other thing, and I'm surprised nobody pointed this out. I didn't notice it. I wasn't paying all that much attention. I had that synth patch. Um, up here, which is engaged, I think, on this patch? No, it's around here somewhere. It'll be six, won't it? Yeah. So this engages my synth sound, um, which I, I like, and this went over quite well. Again, you can see that the levels there are, are way, way too high. This is just way too hot. Um, again, mistakes were made. 
Uh, but what I didn't really think about, or what I didn't consider, is when I was on another patch, this patch, for example, my signal is coming along here and it's going through my amp, but it's also splitting and going up here and going through these with a DI sound. So it was hard for me to notice it. When I do this, it's a little bit more prevalent. When I play something like that, um, I'm getting two sounds there. I'm getting my overdriven sound, but if I disengage that, this sound was coming through as well. The DI signal. So I've rectified that. I worked out a way to rectify that. And the way we've rectified that now is up here on the synth patch, when the pedal is in bypass mode i've set the bypass mode to mute the output so now the signal is coming up here it's hitting the synth pedal but because it's off it doesn't feed out so now we get a, a proper you know the amp sound without di signal fed into there um yeah so i'm just going to quickly run you through these patches as i say i'm after this video i'm going to work out how to share these patches with you so you can toy around with it yourself but we essentially have the same basic idea we have the clean tone which when i put my neck pick up on or bridge a nice sound my expression pedal is again controlling my overdrive and the delay and the thing that's fun about this delay is um if we look at the mix i've created this very specific control for that so when i put my foot up it ramps up quite quickly but the release time on that is much slower so when i put my foot all the way down it takes a long time to come down that uh down that slope which means my delay stays on for a lot longer when i keep my foot off so if i were to play and then bring my foot down that delay will keep playing and if i were to play a clean sound it feels like a more natural um blend of those two things and the same idea with the with the drive when i put my foot up we get the mix and the drive of the pedal coming up and pedal wise this is the zen master which obviously is based on the zen drive um, that's the overdriven sound that i've gone for that's the bridge pickup <laughs> neck pickup My other expression pedal is again going to control my Leslie. So uh, again, I changed the parameter on this pedal a little bit now. So um, no, no, let's not disengage that. There we go. Uh, so the rate knob, I've just changed the attack and release on this. So it takes a little bit longer to ramp up when I put my foot down quickly. Uh, and when I bring it down quickly, it um, ramps off a little bit faster. But I do have that all the nice control that we would want there. Um, and that's going to sound like this, so my clean tone. And I am using this sound a lot on a gig. And it pairs well with the overdrive too. So I like that. That's my basic clean sound. Um, my second patch is the same patch as before. The only difference here is that that foot control now controls a wire pedal. So I get that. which is nice for, you know, funk riffing. Uh, my third patch is going to be a lead tone. So did some different things here. Um, the amp changes now to a Texas, um, this is, I assume, based on the um, the Mesa, Texas Lone Star. 
um, and the overdrive switches to a, a TS-808, which is, of course, the Ibanez Tube Screamer. Um, and the reason I've gone for that is I, f I like the Texas lead amp. This is a nice sound, um, but it was very bass heavy. So I've used the, um, the TS-808 just to uh, clean up the bottom end a little bit. You should also notice that the delay patch will change from A, which is a delay which is, of course is controlled by my expression pedal. And then when I go on to that lead tone, we have uh, the B channel. Again, it's still an analog delay. Um, 417 milliseconds and the mix is at 7%. Not too high. I don't want it to be too overpowering, um, but that's going to give us this. And this um, is the only other solo sound I have set up. So um, I'm controlling volume knob on this. I can have it all out. So if I bring that volume down to four, down to two, Now, when on this patch, uh, I have a wire engaged, so I can. So, controlling a wire. Uh, the left expression pedal isn't doing anything on that patch. Next up, we have my um, auto wire sound. Uh, these are auto wires I find a little bit tricky to set up in the Axe Effects. Um, if we take a look at the control on that, it's controlled by an envelope filter, so you can see visually. It doesn't seem to matter how hard you pick, you can't ever seem to get this envelope to go all the way to the top, um, and I couldn't seem to find a way to make that a little bit more um, responsive, but the wah sound is going to do the job, so... <laughs> I like that sound. I'm using it for things like I wish. So, does the job. Um, again, I can put on my um, overdrive. controlled there and I do have the Leslie set up on this one as well don't see myself using it but it is there uh, patch number five scene number five is my swells sound uh, this was this was a lot of fun to toy around with because the volume swell for this is being controlled by the expression pedal but I did toy around with having it controlled by the envelope so I could just pick the note and that would set the the swell in in place ultimately i decided to go stick with the volume because i found that it was a little bit more uh i could control it a little bit more so um aside from that we've got the leslie on all the time and the delay patch has changed so before we had the analog mono delay on and now we have um a dual delay set up uh and there's loads of things happening when I swell this up. So you can see when I push my expression pedal up, the mix of that delay comes up. And when I put my expression pedal down quickly, that mix declines, but it does it slowly. Um, again, when I have my foot up, the feedback on those delays goes up. And when I bring it down, the feedback on the delays comes down. So when I have my foot up, the delays are going to stay for a longer period of time. And then when I bring my foot down, the idea is that those delays will fade out faster so I can swell the next chord in. Um, aside from that, it is... No, that's all it's controlling. So the expression pedal is just doing... Um... Oh, no, sorry, tell a lie. So it's linked with the volume pedal as well. So volume pedal from 0 to 10, and then delay being controlled so swelling chords on and swelling delay on and then bringing them down and that of course is going to give me that nice
which is a sound I'm really fond of. I think it's a really nice way to um, create some ambience and, and not quite sound like a keyboard player, but create a sound. So, um, And this for me, again, is why I love the Axe Effects, because I'm able to create these really kind of wild out there sounds. Um, patch six is a synth patch. So this is my what I'd, I'll call my unison patch. And um, we're using the amp and the synth to create my unison sound. So if I do the, the Stevie um, Sir Duke. Or on the bridge pickup. Now the change here I've done is um, I've got two filters on it to try and bring out some of that fizzy high end with this um, high shelf. And I've also got the wah on this. So now um, I can make it sound a little bit more expressive by going. I thought that was a lot of fun being able to control that with a wah. And uh, that sound, that basic sound, went over really well on the gig when I used that uh, to solo on a Cheryl Lynn tune. And the audience just erupted uh, because it's just such a wild sound, right? So I've refined it. I've made it a little bit more exciting. Uh, patch 7 has nothing on it. I've not put a preset in here. There's a good reason for this. There's a very good reason for this. Uh, if I click up on FC Edit, um, let's bring up scenes. So this is what I'm actually seeing on my on my gig. Um, I've got my Leslie, my wah, my lead, my auto wah, my swells, my synth. I've got another synth patch. Um, and this button is now a tuner. Because what I realized on the gig is I hadn't set up a tuner. <laughs> now, you can bring up a tuner by pressing the... There's a little button, an A button. Um, but the only easy way for me to get to it without doing that would be to press two buttons at once to go back to like a main menu and then press the tuner and then to go back into it was a lot of clicking and i'd also realized that when i had my tuner on it wasn't bypassing it wasn't muting my signal so i was having to tune and people were hearing me so i had to essentially go about tuning but now i've got a tuner button right there in front of me at any point i can i can put that on and it will mute my signal which is kind of important <laughs> so um that's in place of where scene seven would normally go um, and then finally we have uh another synth patch so this is this is a weird one right so two synth patches feels overkill i like this synth patch so much and i like the response that it got from people <laughs> Um, I thought it would be fun to try a different one. So we've got a sawtooth, triangle, and square, like blending all of those sounds together. But when I go on patch eight, we've got triangle, triangle, and triangle, which is a much softer sound. But the other thing that I did that's different on this one is you can see that the amp actually isn't engaged. And the same idea, when it's bypassed, it mutes the signal. So nothing comes through here. We only get synth in this patch, um, which means that I can go from having this sound to this sound. And I've also set up some pitch control on this. So my expression pedal now is a whammy pedal um so th i think the idea behind that is so i can do i'll see how this goes and see how people like this but um now being able to play as a <laughs> as a solo sound is a fun one um definitely something that i enjoy so those are the only patches that i have the only other thing um to point out again a great tool is to come in under here under scene levels and i can now 
now I know to do this. Now when I'm playing that synth sound, you know, I want to make sure that this is loud enough so I can just come under here into scene levels and boost the volume for scene eight. And now it's going to be much louder than my other tone. You can see I've used that on patch five, which is the swells patch, because when I swell on, I want there to be volume more volume because we're going to be on the quieter side on that patch and this felt like the easiest way to do that so that is the entirety of my um new live patches check out the link in the description and you will be able to download these for yourself but again if i just bring my face back up i love this unit i love this unit it's it's a creative joy to kind of envisage a sound to think to yourself how could i go about doing that um there's just all manner of routing options uh, that we can make you know anything happen and to me that's really cool and exciting and it's it's different to an amp you know there were definitely downsides like you need to learn how to use the unit that's really important you have to be able to use the unit i was in a setting where my clean tone wasn't clean enough and i didn't know the unit well enough to be able to fix that on the gig so i had to live with it um i was in a position where i was unable to access a quick tuner again i don't know that i didn't know the unit well enough to know how to do that so you want to get familiar with how to edit things on the fly on your rig um and learn the ins and outs for me you know going through the uh, cooper carter course has been um, a godsend and i'm still you know only a fraction of the way through that and there's loads more things that i'm going to learn who knows maybe i'm going to change these patches and integrate some more things but for me you know it's nice to be able to have um so many options for me at the press of just one button and if I want to play a gig where I only have a guitar and amp sound, I've got it at the press of a button. I've got a clean tone. I've got an overdrive. And I've got a, a real proper lead tone. All that, that could be enough for me to do a whole gig. Um, so, yeah that and um, but if i want the wild sounds now i can hear that i shouldn't have made those adjustments on the scene level because it's too loud now so we will adjust that back down save cool so any questions about this let me know in that comment section below what do you think about this entire rig what do you think about this <laughs> I like this guitar. I used both guitars on the gig. I had this and the and the Sur, and I think I actually preferred playing this. So um, didn't see that one happening, <laughs> but such is life. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for another video soon. Later.